Hello, hello everyone. As you may remember, I used to do tutorials about Ericsson, and here we are again. So, we have been doing the success path for Patreon, and I have several success paths that I want to build, and for them to be successful, uh, I need to reduce certain things. So, we will start remaking the base series, so the creature grooming series, and for this, we're going to use this lovely friend. So let me show you how this render is looking right now. So I think I close it. No, it's here. So this is the little render. So I left that without optimization, full specs on everything, and it's taken a lot of time, but I didn't care because it was just a full render. So this is our little guy. We have a basic creature to groom. This is the light rig, so my scene, it's messy. And I did it messy on purpose. So if you look at my outliner, oops, it's here. This lights it up, by the way, it's been done with quick light. This plugin here, that is pretty good. I will talk about it later on. Uh, let me show you. So this is everything from the light rig, there. But also, this is my blob group, and it's a slightly let's say organized, but it's not perfectly organized. So we will start with the folder structure. We will live under a folder structure, right? So let's come here. And this folder structure is called Bob or Blob. And I have several folders, the base that are where I'm putting my models. I have several Blobs, as you know, that are my char for the spirits. Uh, we have the concepts, and I have a slight concept, so I have some some tests here and there about how this may look and how we can create certain things. So I'm basically sketching basic ideas, fur qualities, different areas. I think this is fucking awesome. It's super fun, and it's going to be complex to do these things. Uh, the odd shape around some fur things, maybe this is too bright, too much, but it's just a basic concept. Then we have the light, and here's where it's the light scene. Remember, always saving with MAs. My look def, I have nothing, but I created everything. My ref, that is fur the fur. I have some refs that I save over uh, from Unsplash. So I have some reference here that may be useful. This is where I took that part. So you can see that there are big references, good resolutions, all of them. So they will help a lot to whatever we need to do. And we have several references here, right? That's good. Now, we have the render and I have a light folder. And uh, here you can see my small little renders, the small render and the front render at 1080, right? So there's there, nothing fancy, but we don't even have a project folder. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a, a, a Maya folder. So this is going to be my Maya folder. This is where my project for Maya is going to live because I don't even have that. As many of you, when you start, you don't have a project. And this is maybe the most common issue that we have. So I will create a project now. Remember that every time before you start, and one of the most common issues that we normally have, it's this. So the projects are not set, you lose your, your information and they're gone. So let's start when you work with XGEN. Uh, think of this as a full pipeline that we will animate and take across every discipline. So the first step is going to go to set project, or the project window? No, it's a project window. Why? Because we're going to create all the things that we want. So I'm going to create a new one. So new project, and this new project, it's going to be on my Maya scene. So I can create different branches on my Maya scene. So it's going to live inside of the blob Maya scene. So right, that's good. So this is going to be the one that we're going to use. And the project is going to call be called blob one or chart blob, blob A. Okay, we have a name, char blob A, because it's my first blob, char in minus caps uh, or lower caps and B on capitals. 
so we live there. We need uh, the scenes, the assets, it's good, the images, we need it. Render data, we don't need it. Clips, we don't need it yet. Sound, we don't need it. Scripts, don't. Data, yes. Uh, movies, uh, for Play Blast if we do some. Translator data, mm, no. Time editor, no. Autosave, I'm going to, not going to use it. And is it assembly, I'm not going to use it. So that's fine. That's what I need. So use defaults, everything on default. There's no problem there. Use defaults and that's good. Let's click accept. And this is going to create char blob A inside of blob Maya. And it's going to create, actually created all the ones that I don't want. So that data assets is gone. Uh, script sounds and time editor are gone. So I don't need that. Uh, render data, I don't need it. Let's just keep the things that we will need actually just for action. So let's just focus on action and let's remove this and Cache, we may need it, but if we need it, we will add it. So let's go to the basics. Images, scenes, and source images, right? The dot, like the action file is going to be created the moment that we create the action group. So that's fine. Now, this is not going to be my light rig, right? So everything here goes to hell. Yeah, it does. So, we're not going to use this scene to render. This is going to be our base scene. So let's go to perspective, if you like. I don't need a perspective one, because this is not going to be for rendering. That's good. Now let's clean these also. So my hyper shade, anything that is not going to be used, delete unused nodes. Uh, Shark and Fisher, this will be gone, lights off. Uh, shark in Fisher, this will be gone, and I don't know what the hell are you, nope, you're gone. So materials, I have materials that I need to rename, so they're being used for Shark in Fisher, and this is my I material because I have some namespaces, and then let's put it first, everything correct, mat underscore I. Matt underscore cornea. Matt underscore uh, skin. So you can do this way or you can do it the other way around. The other way around will be, if we come here, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, skin matte and you will be skin matte. It's G just because I lost the proper name of this thing. So this will be cornea mat. And I will explain you later why I'm using the convention that I'm using. So cornea mat is G. And this will be I or crystal or water or whatever. So basic I. So this is going to be. Uh, let's just keep it I. It's not complicated things, mat, and this is going to be I mat SG. So let me see if I put everything. So this one is not in caps, so let's put it in caps. So skin mat SG, and this one. So you need to keep a convention. This is the most important part, and this this may sound okay. You're you're over complicating things. No, this is pipeline. This is full how things should be. You should have constant naming and constant conventions. Why? Because if you need the materials, you can search for the materials. How? You wildcard things and they will appear. So if what I want is an eye material, I can get the eye material. If I want the skin, so just the skin material from a stone of materials, skin, and I have the skin material, right? So if what I want is a light, the light will have light. The, everything that you have here, texture will have displacement, normal, whatever you have, you should use a convention that you know how it's built and how to search for it, right? Now, we have this part set. Let's save. And the first thing that we will do inside of the scenes is create one that is called model. And we're going to create another one 
that is called room. Why inside of Maya? Why not outside? Yes, we will create outside of this another one if we want that is called model and outside of this another one that is called room. This can be completely up to the user. If you want to create your main disciplines outside and then you create your projects inside, it's up to you. If you create your projects inside, it's up to you. I will create them inside for, per, for these purposes. So I will have inside of this all my files inside of a scene. So in this moment, I will have my groom and my model because those are the versions of Sharp Bob. The ones that I will have here will be the ones that are going to be used across all Sharp's Blob because I will have several Sharp Blob. This may sound confusing, so let's do a small graph. So we have the whole of the project, right? So this is the folder called Blob. Let's make something that looks a little bit more obvious. So Blob, right? Inside of Blob, we have folders. And these folders are Groom, Model, uh, Light, Concept, blah, 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 blah. So several disciplines there. But inside of Blob, we will have different types of Blobs. So these disciplines that we have here are going to be general, but each of them will have different types of Blobs. So Blob A, Blob B, and Blob C. Now, we can create different disciplines inside of each of them. So model, groom, uh, textures, and it's going to work because all of these are going to be different for each. So this one has three and this one has three. But then we have the light rigs that is going to create a turntable. I want the light rig to be the same for all. And I want the cameras to be the same for all. In a, and if I have a, a background for the presentations, I want to be the same for all. And I want the, the HDRI to be the same for all and the ingest of the models and different things that can be the same for all. This is where the char blob disciplines are. So that's why we have the disciplines here too, because we may have things that are going to be shared between all of them, which means that why are then we going to create one inside of each? We will need to have a shared area. The shared area is going to be that one. So the final structure looks like this. We have blob. Blob has the shared area and blob has the variations. In this case, we can call this char. So char has the variations, it has the shared. Variations can be A, B, and C. And if we have more A, A, B, B, C, C, blah, blah. And shared is going to be everything that the variations may use every time that they need to call for something. So we share this data here, we share this data here, and we share this data here. Let's say that we updated the HDRI and the textures of the background, right? So all of them, the moment that we render them, we will be able to render them with the latest. Let's say that we updated the hair shader and we have a basic hair shader that will be shared between all of them. Let's say that we updated the eye shader, that the eye shader will probably be the same. So we want all of them to get them. So we will have a custom library for characters, but we will also have a base library for all of them. So that's where these things come from. We can call these file variations if you want. So this Maya file here can be called variations. That's not a problem. I'm just calling it Maya because 
So that will basically you decide how you want to call it. Variations could be good. Characters could be good. It doesn't mind as far as you know what you have and you repeat it every time. So I'm going to be inside of Maya, chart blob, the scenes, model. This is important. This is going to be my model scene. And I have to version this thing up manually because we are not going to use any pipeline for this project. So char blob a version one. That's my Maya scene and I will save it. Now, this Maya scene has a lot of issues. Why? Because this outliner is a slightly organized, but it's a mess. And this is way better from what I have normally from a lot of people. So I normally have, so yeah, this has names at least. Uh, I norm, I don't need Karunkle for this guy. No, I think I don't need Karunkle. So let's delete that one that I don't need. This is my base IGO. The one that looks like this. I need to optimize and to make a new IGO by the way. But the base is good enough to work. But the problem is we have two geos here. We don't know which one is which. Uh, we have things that doesn't have name, at least nothing has polysurface, something that a lot of people does every time is let, let's say I have this, this guy here, this flower here, and what I get it's this polysurface with no names. No. So either of you give me a combined geo for the groom, because these things are not going to have groom. Or you give me a separate geo with proper naming. The same geo that you will give the rigger. And if the rigger change a name, you have to change it back in your main model. So the rigger cannot change names either. They need to discuss it with the model because the model has to be the one that defines everything downstream. So we have concept. Under concept, we have a sculpt. We don't care about the scope yet because that's free. The scopes are free of topology, free of everything as far as they match. Once we have an approved scope, we go to modeling. So modeling does the riptopo, does the, the UVs, do the UV set. It does everything there. Once the model is approved, it has to have a proper hierarchy. It has to have proper normals, subdivision levels. It has to have everything that the package should have. And that naming convention that everything that you see there should be kept. Then it goes to several places in parallel. This is called stream. So each of these is a stream. And this is downstream. And this is upstream. Things normally don't move upstream unless you need to do changes. Downstream means that everything that you do here will ripple across all the other departments. So if we change the scope, it's going to ripple across the model. If we change the concept, it's going to ripple across. If we change the concept, we may need to send the model back to scope. So it's upstream. It affected the model. And by the way, once the model is approved and goes back under, then we have to ripple across the other departments. So if we have UVs, texture. If we have groom, groom. And then we have rig. The riggers are the ones that are most affected by model changes because groom is mostly not affected by model changes if the topology and the vertex order is the same. So we can iterate really fast with modeling. So our upstream department and groom, they communicate really well. So you can do model changes in groom and then just adjustment and send it back. And, and groom is not that destructive as far as you don't change that topology or the UVs. Texturing. Texturing is really friendly and you can do topology changes if you keep the UVs. And if you change the shape a lot and change the UVs, you need a bridge. Same as Groom. But Rick, 
If you change the position of one, the shoulder or the ankles, or if you change any position of any joint, you pretty much need to rebuild the, the rig and you need to recache a lot of things and those are really affected by it. So normally, rig just works with approved models. So rigging will work with just approved models that are already proven to be working for groom and texturing and rigging and modeling normally comment a lot as we can work a lot without it they can iterate a lot on what things they need to move uh, a star or an end on a little bit up upwards or blah 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 so this is quite the iteration but we can work along once these things are proof this is moved to look dev and look dev can move independently and look dev doesn't care about rig mostly most of the time just in complex cases uh groom can be merged and texturing can be merged and these two can be merged so the groom can have look dev and texture or the groom can live without textures for a while uh, the textures and the look dev can live without the groom if so it's it's something that we can share but we don't need to exist by the order and they get complete to go to the light the light is a combination of the light says light rigs grooms look dev and texture normally the light it's posed to so this is not the model that goes to in typos because light is normally a fancy render so you can do it on typos but it looks better if it's already posed and after it's approved on light we can take it finally to animation rig can bring animation in so this one does this two works the same and normally animation is before light so this is a really weird thing because this comes here anim and rig are the best friends that they hate each other it's like a Stockholm syndrome and once the anime is done it goes to light so light lives in a bridge between boat and anime lives, lives next to rig and anime lives, lives downstream rig and then from here we go to comp uh, that's if we don't have tech anymore simulation right so I'm not taking tech anime simulation into account so this one says Rick I don't like this joint there is moving really awful and is breaking everything so Rick says okay I need a model change so the model changed and we hate everyone why because the model changed so texture needs to check everything groom needs to check everything and then look dev has to check everything and if yeah so that's what we call downstream if we have to send something upstream and requires a change from a um, uh, department upstream, we'll have to repo across. So yeah, this is a pipeline lesson now. So that's the reason why we need proper naming conventions and the departments below, they shouldn't change. They should not change the names unless you talk with your modeler. Don't change the names of things, leave it to the modeler. Uh, even the rigger, if, you, if the rigger is normally the one that it's organized because no one else is organized so the riggers organize everything and then they start changing names and then the groomer works with no names and polysurface and then the rigger organize everything and then they send it back and it's oh but my groom is not working anymore it's like yeah what happened oh i changed the names it's like yeah it's broken that's because you didn't groom on a final asset again out of modeling it should have proper naming conventions that's really important so let's do them this is bob so we said that it's going, it's going to call char blob a and i could add that this one is the lot a level of detail a this is my hero character and why my level of detail a because these characters even if you see them like cute and everything they are third party character so they are going to be crowds they're going to be crowds of these guys running on the forest so uh yeah that was a massive spoiler uh i don't want them to be just lot a's i want to have lot b lot c lot d and have different lots so lot a now blob one body skin geo what the hell is this oh this is the basic one 
and this one here it's my pose so you my little guy shouldn't even be here so I will take this guy here and I will click export selection and since model anim or pose so here we need to decide I will put it on post and this is a personal naming convention normally this will be on caches so caches will work if we call this a cache so rename cache that works so what's going to be the caches poses and this one is going to be uh, how do we call it it's idle that's my idle pose so this is going to be uh, my asset first so idle version 1 because it's the model version 1 so the full name is going to be char blob a version 1 idle 1 so char blob a version 1 idle 1 why on hell are we making things so complex we're making things so complex because we need to know the version of the model that this cache originated from because we will need to blame ship it and we need to know the number of the posts that we are using and that way we can keep track of everything so i will save this and i will export selection i know that this is a cache so i will also create an alembic cache export selection to alembic here and we need some, to do some important things so my start end time i will start on 1001 because it's a cache and we should start here if we need to do any pre-simulation so all the times when you work all your projects start on 10001 or 101 you never start on zero because you may need to run a pre-simulation so this is going to run to yield let's call 100 frames that's good 100 frames of cache this is just for the sake of rendering the cache and i want to write the ub sets uh, yep that's that's okay so export selection and we will put the same name export selection so we have the maya file where we used to generate this and we also have our alembic that's it we're done so this little guy because we saved that guy there we're going to delete it now we don't have that guy because we're not going to groom in pose we're going to groom here if we need to import it we will do it later now blob it's not the name we will have char blob a lot a body skin so this is the name because this is my lot a of char blob body skin geo so why it's using a weird naming convention char blob a so char lower why char because it can be a prop it can be effects it can be sim it can be i don't know it can be a lot of things so this is a charter blob name on this case char blob variation char blob a underscore lot so level of detail lot a body so what type what part is so in this part in this case is part the part is body then we have id skin so this is the material id oops why it's id skin because if we use an automated system that we can script really easily this will look for anything that has underscore id 
and read the next part after this and assign the material. I have a material that is called a skin mat, right? Remember? Skin mat. So if this area matches with this area, assign the material. That's basically what the script does. So if we have a proper naming convention, we have an automatic render generation. So we have basic materials for everything right away. That's why we use the material ID. And finally, geo, underscore geo. Why? Because it can be curves, it can be, I don't know, whatever. But in this case, we have a geo. It can be a group for anything that I know. So this is the naming convention. Now, I forgot to do something. This is a group. So every group will end with RGB. So that's the naming convention. And now we need to repeat this. So this one has a proper name. So this is left flower, uh, but we have several flowers, fungus and grass. So this is a flower. This is a flower. I uh, just have two flowers, right? So I will combine this and I will put flower group. So these are my flowers. There's a difference here. There's a weird name on the stem of this rose. And this thing is the, okay, it's this one. So rose geo and this, I will for now, for now, remember what I'm saying and let's see if the UVs are correct just before I do anything crazy. Oh wow, okay, this shouldn't have UDIMs unless it's super, hyper, mega superhero. Uh, we are not using a super, mega superhero. So we will have to, let's just combine this really fast, Rose Geo. So let's put it here. Uh, and let's edit, delete all by type history to remove that and that's done. So flower group, and this will be rows and will be ID. We probably don't have this, but I will put ID flower. It will be really weird to have an ID flower, it's not a normal ID, but we may have a material for flowers, like basic material. We'll have a basic material for subsurface maybe, or plants. I think nature plants will be a better one, but uh, just to add something off subsurface, but this will be the rose and this will be the other flower that I don't know what flower it is, so I'll remove that. And we have the flower group, ID flower, and rose, ID flower, geo. So that's done. Now, this will be the left eye. Why? Because we don't take a screen. So there's two ways to read right and left. We have character light right and left. So char, this is in char base. This will be the left and this is the right of this car character, right? So the character has right and left. And then we have a screen. This is the left and this is the right if we read on the screen monitor. So we normally use this to put notes on animation on a screen right. So the screen right hand is broken. So we know that it's this hand because it's a screen right hand. But that's an animation. Normally on the comments of assets, we call it on the char level which is really confusing. But yeah, we have two levels. So we don't call it there. And this it will be the right eye of my character. So the easiest way is to put it and look at it from behind. And this is going to be the right eye group. And this is going to be the left eye group. So left eye, right eye, and both will be the eyes group. Oops, eyes group good. So ice group, flower group, grass, it's already in one geo. So I could make a bigger group called uh, 
nature group. But to be honest, the grass should not be in one single geo. And it all shares the same UVs apparently, which is not good either. So I will, we will need to do some variations. Each of them should be a different geo, uh, but I will not do it yet because those parts are not going to have groom. So we'll need to decide, do we want to rig this an automatic motion or not? We want to simulate them. Uh, if we do, we can do it. So let's do it. So mesh separate. And we have what we see everywhere. The beautiful poly surface, right? But you don't need to do that. So just click here, go to rename and put the name that you want. So grass ID grass geo. No, right? So uh, grass ID grass and that's all. So I have grass ID grass to 100. And I come here again and go to the full rename. So the full rename was here. I remember. I remember. It doesn't happen to you that you lose always the same things. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> general. It's not in general. Channel. Namespace editor. Display, modify, maybe it's here. Yeah. So search and replace and prefix hierarchy name. So I don't want a prefix, I want a suffix. A search and replace. So search for, hmm, no. So I don't remember how to do this of the suffix here. Uh, let's see. Okay, we found it on C Michael WordPress. So search for, that means that search for type dollar signs, take all the length and in the replace width field in your post fix. So this will append box fixes in Maya. So replace with int. Let's see, I haven't tried that. I have a, a custom tool to do that. So I'm not using anything. So this and replace replace with geo. Apply, yes, it works. So now we have all of them named correctly, but it's not correct at the same time. So let's go to rename again because grass should be the one that has this. So grass is there. And then we will add ID grass uh, with lower caps because I need the name not on the ID. I need the name this. Apply. So that's done. So grass ID blah 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 blah. We have history. Edit. Delete all by type history. So this is not an easy process. I already 40 minutes explaining the process on having a proper naming convention on a model. But this is really important if you want to work with Exxon. You need to make things right. So if you need, if you want to be professional, be professional since the start and put no proper naming conventions, uh, get everything correctly built. It's, it's fine. It's not that hard if you think about it. And by the way, my OCD is killing me because the numbers are inversed. I don't know if you have the same thing, but it's killing me. So we have the right eye. My right eye already has all the naming conventions correct. My left eye though, no. My left eye is called differently. So again, let's go to the modify and we will use search and replace and we will replace R underscore with left underscore and we will apply. And now we have the proper naming conventions for all my parts on the left, right? So nature, actually nature could be called plants, uh, plants groups, plants group and grass. So we have fungus and this one. 
So this is my fungus group. And this one is going to be inside of plants. And it doesn't have a bad name. This is confusing. So left back. And it's not on the back. So this left front. Fungus. Right. Okay, left front. This isn't okay. You can see it, right? The name of conversion is not constant. So this is on the center. So this is center. And this one here, it's right. So that's when the riggers get like, what the hell are you doing? So you need to have a constant naming convention. This it's left. This will be okay. Meat is a good name. So meat uh, or front meat, front left. Yes, I think front should be at the start. So front meat. So let's copy paste this. Front left. I swear if you did this, the riggers will love you. Back, left. On pipeline, they will kill you if you don't do this. Uh, but if you do it on not pipeline level, the riggers will, you will be the best friend or, of the riggers. And believe me, you should be. They're amazing. So, back, meet. You always want to be on good uh, terms with a rigger. And this is right, front, right front right fungus now uh, I will not put it fungus I will put it mushroom mushroom so let's select everything because it's the same name so now we're starting to make things friendlier I should have stopped closing this thing so search for uh, this and search for fungus. Let's add this here. So apply and actually we need to add this. So mushroom underscore ID mushroom or ID shroom. No ID mushroom should exist. Mushroom it's going to be just a subsurface again. Uh, a simple subsurface scattering. So mushroom, ID mushroom. No, I don't think it works. So basically we need to define that if the object doesn't exist, uh, it's just done, put an ID. So ID, that should do something like this. So one again, like this. So if you have just ID because it's an object that is too specific, you just don't put the material. So if it finds an ID, just use the ID. In this case, grass is fine, but mushroom should not. ID flower should be fine. Uh, Ides, it has I Iris, Iris, Ides, Clara, Beatrice, and Cornea. Everything has correct names. So we have meat plants, low plant, and sharp blob. So we have uh, right. So, yeah, this one doesn't have back or front, so back meat, and this will be ID plant or ID grass. I think this will be plant, and the ID can be grass because it's a normal ID. The ID is the material. So let's lower and just left plant. I think this one can be right plant because we just have two. So right plant and ID grass should be fine. And sharp ball blood eight lot of skin. So now this is going to be my perfect lot A model. So before I do anything and before I do something really silly, I will just before I overwrite this file because I will overwrite version one. This will be my first released version. I will open Maya again 
And what I will do is that I will go and import my MA. The one that I used, so since uh, this project is not set, so I will go to the blob, Maya, Charbop, set project, and I go to cache Alembic and I will. Ooh, didn't I save an MA? You see? I thought that I'd save an MA. Oh, it's cache. It, I put cache inside uh, and I save outside. So the MA is here. Yeah, I was silly. So uh, the MA is here. So this is my basic MA. So we have it there. Uh, no material, no anything. So let's clean this a bit. Let's see what we have here. There's no material, no textures, no lights. It's fine. I didn't cache everything on this guy. I'll just cache the post idle. So let's just save in the correct position because I didn't save it in the correct position. Let's stop. Let's override this only. So idle version one. Yes. And let's export again the cache. Uh, cache Alembic. Export selection to Alembic because I didn't put it on the correct position. Start end. So 101, 100. 1 100 and right the resets and yeah you can see it there I didn't put it in the correct folder was in char blob scenes cache but I decided to put it so that should be that shouldn't be here should be outside so let's save that there so the one that is wrong it's the Maya scene because I put it on there and it's the cache of the main one that should be here. So I will just take my scene and go to scenes, cache that shouldn't exist there, should be here, and I will just override this. And now I have Alembic and poses, idle, and there. So let's put uh, poses there, and this one inside, and this one inside. So I have my MA and my idle. So that's fine. I can recover everything if I need to. And let's save this guy. So now the only thing that I will do is that I will go. I close it. I shouldn't have closed it. I will put uh, the name of my post, the same name of this geo. And under the same group, just if I need to import something with a script, it will be in the same thing. So. I could actually just get everything, but I will not extend that much. I will exp I will explain this later, to be honest. I will not extend that much uh, on the lesson here. So we have the model, we have everything. We know that the post is safe. Uh, we will add the plants to the plants group. So we have plants. So let's group this and this will be plants group. And we have a folder. So we have a file. Let's go and use an edit, delete all by type history, save. And before we do anything else, I will show you something else that always happens when you send your models to someone else. You shouldn't have any type of unknown node. So we shouldn't have anything from Redshift, we shouldn't have anything for Arnold, we shouldn't have anything from any render system when you save your model. So what we will do, it's unknown uh, node Maya. It will appear. Uh, this one is, this is the code. Uh, yeah, so if something like for item in unknown from items in unknown, it's going to do this. So basically, if you do this, import Maya commands as Maya commands and delete commands, it will give you the data or this one here. But there is one that is an official one for Maya and you can run this script. So if you go to Autodesk and go for file contents, no notes when saving as Maya scene in ASCII that you cannot save, 
because the miocene has trash. You just run this code that we will run it right now here on mail. So let's put it here. Let's make it bigger. And if you run it on mail, it will delete all the folders or all the files that are unknown. So you will have a clean file. Now, this folder, this character, it's ready to be rigged and groomed. I actually have a little bit of a secret Santa there. So it could be that I have a namespace. So let's check something. Let's check if the model has namespace. That is something that no one's ever searched for. And voila, we have namespaces. So let's content. We have trash. And all things that you can see here, it's this little thing. So you see, there was still things that shouldn't be there. So let's delete this. Merge with root. Now let's refresh this. So we don't have anything. And this thing here, let's display hiding in outliner. So it has a really weird name that is not the one that I want to use. So this is model by Jesus FC, and this should be 2020. Normally you shouldn't add things like this, but I'm adding them as a copyright thingy because of the type of, of project that this is. So I will just hide in the outliner again and ignore hidden. So it exists there, doesn't have anything related to the old names and should be fine. So this model now has proper naming conventions. The project was set. So we have a project set on blob A uh, and this is ready. So things that we may need to change later, probably we will need to separate these flowers. So instead of having something like this, we will have probably for, for texturing and for look depth or maybe simulation. We don't know what's going to happen. We will have something like separate and these ones here are going to be uh, petals. And then we go here, modify. And we do this, and this is going to be petal, uh, ID petal, geo. And then we go to flower, the second flower that is here. And actually, I think I didn't do everything. So just did petal. This is stem. So rose. Uh, stem ID grass geo. I could add prefix here, and the prefix will be rose. Search for uh, no, this one was the prefix. Rose, so rose petals, ID petal, and this will be, I don't know, what's the name of this? That's one of the trickiest parts, so rose parts names. So this is called sepal. Don't we have anything more friendly? Ovary, thalamus, uh, sepal, receptacle, stem, beautiful. So stem, petal. Don't we have something that has a better sounding name than sepal? Well, it will be called sepal then. So this is rose, sepal, uh, ID. <laughs> Of course, we will not have a sepal. So grass geo, 
and this will be and this one and probably this one is something that I don't know what it is oh I'm missing one petal Ooh. so rose petal this is going to be hard because now we have a mess of petals 14 yes so rose petal 15 I did you and this one will be rose leaf I the grass to you and this will be leaf one and this is going to be leaf two and edit delete all by type history so you see naming conventions are not as easy right so we need to repeat the process for this one I will not repeat the process for that one that one and this one has too many parts so I will not do it here on the well it's just petals to be honest but that's the process I will try to clean it fully uh, not on the stream but this is how you clean your scene uh, you clean everything then you delete history it's also really important that you select everything and everything is with no transformation so freeze transformations reset transformations and you select all your groups now and you repeat the same so freeze transformation uh, freeze first reset second and once you have everything there just do a history delete again and save so now everything is ready for Rick uh, looks like I kill one eye beautiful I hit uh, reset transformations uh, first instead of freeze so that was what happened it went back because I didn't have that uh, freeze so now the only problem of this is that I inverted the scaling X so it could be that my normals are now different so let's go to display polygons and face normals and uh, looks like my face normals are pointing out so that's fine it's good uh, face normals so I want to see every part of this thing so let's go and check this ah you can see the normals are inverted but this is a sclitter so it's no it's not right so mesh uh, reverse so that's better so poop, poop. my normals are fine uh, my normals are fine and my normals are fine so I don't need to face normal this anymore but probably my sclera here it's also inverted so let's repeat so mesh display reverse and that will be all now before we finish this we will select everything because we don't have anything that is non-soft we will do a soften edge well maybe the grasses I want to show you this so now we have everything that is ID grass may have uh, hard edges right so we will go uh, here just click here and select by name and you put a wildcard uh, or multiply symbol so wildcard and you put ID grass and voila everything with the ID grass name it's selected I don't I didn't select these flowers or these things because I didn't have them selected at the moment so the thing is that I will do a mesh display and uh, I will do a soft and hard edge for those. So now my grasses have proper normals too. So that's why we are doing naming conventions because if we want to select all the groups, wildcard group, we select them all. If I want to select my ID skin, so I just put here skin 
and I need to put the proper name. If I put it on caps, I need to use caps. So skin, and I select everything that has the skin. So if I want to select, for example, my sclera. So sclera, and I have my sclera selected. So the, the naming convention has a lot of different purposes. So I want to select everything that is on the right. Uh, so everything that is on the right will be right underscore. And we have everything that is on the right with the name right. If we want to select everything that is on the left with the left underscore, we will select everything that is on the left. So that will automate a lot of the process once you start working with it. And it's really, really powerful. So we have everything done, delete history. We have a little guy and this it's done. So it take, took us one hour to clean the whole thing and it was already slightly organized. But now we have a full character that we can use properly for all the departments. This is by no means a perfect depot. I just made it really fast for the sake of this example, but I hope you like it and see you in the next one.